Hello, this is Cho of the Shiny Colors Discord. Welcome to another episode of The Shiny Review. Today, we've got four cards to be talking about. We have the new Produce SSR for Toru, the Support SSR for Hana, as well as the Produce SSRs for Kiriko and Tenka as part of My Songs Collection. Keep in mind that Tenka and Kiriko are pseudo-limited. My Songs Collection is the only place you can find their cards, so once this banner is over, you'll have to wait for the next My Songs Collection for a chance to get them at an off rate. As for Toru and Hana, they're permanent, so you'll be able to find them on any banner going forward once this banner is over. Let's go ahead and get started, of course, with Toru. So Toru is initially a visual card that upgrades into a vocal card. Her first appeal is a visual 3.5 that raises your evasion by 20% for four turns. The Link, which requires Madoka and Hinana, grants you plus one to your mulligan. In other words, the ability to discard one of your appeals. The upgraded version of the appeal is a vocal 4.5 that raises your evasion by 30% for 4 turns and links with Koito for the same mulligan effect. Her 1 star passive is a vocal visual 50% up if it's turned 2 or earlier and has a 20% chance to activate once. Her 2 star passive is a vocal visual 85% up and attention 30% up that requires one or more active reaction up buffs and has a 20% chance to activate twice. Lastly, her 4-star passive is a vocal 85% up if you are running the full Knock Chill lineup and has a 20% chance to activate once. Her memory appeal, once maxed out, is an evasion 30% up for 5 turns that links into a vocal 4.0 that scales based on how high your evasion currently is. Toru is... fine, I suppose. She's okay. Clearly she's built to support the new Twi'Kole Koito, but I'm not really sure if this card alone is enough. There's a lot of ideas going on with this card that I think are kind of interesting, and her visual appeal is going to be somewhat helpful in the fact that it lasts for four turns, but again, I don't know if it's going to necessarily be enough to make her a super playable card. I think that this earns her somewhere between a B to a B+. I think the card is playable, but I don't think that she's going to be making the cut on the super high-end teams for now for the stronger versions of Nocchio that we will see going forward. Then, of course, we have Hana. So, Hana has a couple unique masteries, her being a dance support. She has Dance Mastery Stamina, which reaches plus 6 at level 80, otherwise it's plus 4 at level 70, plus 2 at level 30. And Unit Mastery Dance, which reaches plus 12 at level 75, plus 8 at level 65, or plus 6 at level 55. Definitely the idea is you want to get this card to either level 70 or 75 to make the most of her unit mastery if you are trying to build a lot of comedic cards together. Or just keep her at level 70, so 2 star, if you're just looking for the stamina masteries. Or go all the way if you really want the stamina masteries. As for the rest of what Hana does, she has a dance 3.0 appeal that raises your dance by 30% for 4 turns. It also has a change appeal effect, which just requires Hana to be on your team. And this is a dance 25% up for two turns if you discard this appeal using a mulligan. As for her passives, the only notable one is her two-star passive. It's a dance 80% up that requires the full comedic lineup, and it has a 20% chance to activate twice. Hana is... okay as a perm support. She represents a new benchmark for stat uncaps on a permanent support, in the fact that you are able to get upwards of plus 200 to your dance uncap by three stars, which is really good, actually. So, that means that future permanent supports are probably going to follow suit and also have plus 200 to their stat uncaps, meaning that permanent supports are going to be looking a little bit better this year. Her passive is overall solid for comedic. Her masteries are okay, but not particularly outstanding. Her appeal is interesting and might be a positive choice for comedic teams looking to build. Having the change appeal effect is cool, and it being functional with Hana is also pretty cool. It's just a nice buff overall, nothing too crazy. I would give this card a B to a B+. Next then, we have... My Song's Collection, Kiriko, who is a pure dance card. Her initial appeal is a dance 4.0 that ignores the judge's interest and grants a 40% dance buff for 4 turns. The plus effect, which requires your current mental to be 80% or higher and you're running the full Antika lineup, it reduces your current mental by 20% and 
then grants a dance 30% buff for four turns. The upgraded version of her appeal is a dance 5.0 that ignores the judge's interest and grants a dance 80% buff for four turns. The plus appeal has the same conditions as the initial. Your mental's above 80% and the full Antica lineup, reduces your current mental by 20% and grants a 60% dance buff for four turns. For her passives, her one star passive is a memory gauge 20% up that requires the full Antica lineup and it has a 30% chance to activate once. Her two star passive is a dance 100% up if you have three or more active dance up buffs. Has a 20% chance to activate twice. And finally, her four star passive is a dance 150% up and mental 15% heal as long as your current mental is below 49% and has a 35% chance to activate twice. Her memory appeal, when maxed out, is a dance 2.5 that fortifies your dance buffs, just like certain Stray Light cards, that links into an additional dance 2.5 that fortifies your dance buffs. Kuriko is kinda interesting. She actually has a lot of moving pieces that make her a powerful card as either a leader or a center, depending on how you want to build Dance Antika. She complements the Kogane and Sakuya that were somewhat recently released, and makes her a very interesting piece to a puzzle that has been rapidly growing over the last year or so. The cool part is that her healing passive actively works well with the current best support lineup you can be running for dance, which features Alstromeria cards that scale based on how many times you heal. Meaning that this team is going to be a lot stronger than it was before with access to natural healing alongside healing through the Alstromeria cards. I think that this is going to be a really cool card for people to experiment with, and I look forward to seeing more of this card in the future. I'm going to give this card a very tentative A+. I don't think that she's super broken, but I do think that she's really interesting and is certainly playable in Dance Antica builds. <laughs> Lastly then, we have Tenka. Tenka is a pure vocal card this time, and has some neat things going on. Her initial appeal is a vocal 3.0 that all judges that also grants you 15% to your memory gauge and it applies a mental 1% regen for three turns. Her plus appeal, which requires the memory appeal to be in your skill history, gives you a vocal 1.5 follow-up appeal. The upgraded version is a vocal 4.0 to all judges, raises your memory gauge by 25%, grants the same mental health regen of 1% for three turns, and the plus appeal has the same effect and requirements. You have to have your memory appeal in the skill history and this will do a follow-up vocal 1.5 appeal. For her passives, the one-star passive is a mental 10% heal as long as it's turn two or earlier and has a 30% chance to activate once. Her two-star passive is a vocal 100% up and mental 3% heal if there have been three or more healing instances during this performance and has a 20% chance to activate twice. Finally, her four-star passive is a vocal 200% up and memory gauge 10% up if the memory appeal is in your skill history and has a 15% chance to activate four times. Her memory appeal when maxed out is a vocal 150% buff for five turns that follows up with a vocal 4.5 appeal that scales based on how many times you've healed in the run. Tanka seems really good, actually. She absolutely feels like a nice payoff to Alstromedia's old play style of overhealing in order to have additional memory gauge. So that means that your turns where you memory appeal on turn three now have a huge benefit in the form of this Tenka by giving you a ton of firepower and memory gauge building to possibly do multiple memory appeals in one run while still staying healthy. Another huge benefit to her is the fact that she's an AOE unit with easy healing stacks, which lets her pair up nicely with a lot of cards. Because she's an AOE unit and because all of her passives are not tied to Alstromeria, it also makes her a really good slot-in choice for any vocal team that has space for an AoE unit like Tenka. I think the idea that her appeals benefit from having the memory appeal in your skill history is a neat change compared to the previous iterations of it which are just have a character in the skill history. It adds this extra layer of flexibility that I think will be really cool to see experimented with going forward. I'm going to give this card an easy A+, and honestly, probably an S-, minus. maybe leaning more towards the S-. minus. I think this card is very strong, 
and is more than likely going to be seeing a lot of play going forward, whether that be in vocal Alstromeria or in vocal teams that again can afford the AoE slot. Similar to how dance teams for a while were using the Valentine's Natsuha because she was an AoE dance unit with pretty easy to activate high damage appeals. So that will do it for the video today. Thank you so much as always for watching. Next time we'll be talking about whatever banner comes next, so let's look forward to it together. I've been Sho, thanks for watching, have a wonderful rest of your day.